What up, what up? My name is Nick Ingvall, and this is the Sneaker History Podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. If you're a regular member of our community, welcome back. I can't believe I'm about to say this. We're about to kick off our fifth year of the show, and to go along with that, we're going to be making some changes, but I'll save that for a future episode. To start off our fifth year, I wanted to give all of our new listeners a chance to really get to know my co-hosts on the podcast by digging a little deeper into who they are, what kicks they're into, and answer some of the questions that our community members were dying to ask them. So we decided to play a little game of 20-ish questions with everyone on the podcast. Rowit, Mike, Robbie, and myself. On the hot seat for this episode is Rowit. Welcome back to the show. We have another 20 questions. We got Rowett on the hot seat. I think I'm just going to throw this to Mike and just get right into it because there's some good ones from the Discord that I'm excited to hear. And uh, honestly, like, there's going to be a couple couple of really tough questions for oh, Rowett, geez. too, where he has to, like, dig deep and, yeah. and really think uh, about his decision on these answers. My brain is so. a kiddie pool. It is shallow <laughs> and colorful. But let's go for it, See, guys. you're selling yourself short. Selling yourself short. <laughs> you, you're a very insightful but, human being. And Mike, I must say, following uh, up your 27 and a half questions is going to be tough, but, you know, like... The brand is the brand. So if you have 27 and three quarters questions, mine will probably be 15 and they'll still take about 30 minutes worth of answering. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're here yes. for. That's what we're here for. Speaking of th this podcast is about sneakers, not math. So 27 and a half equals 20. Yeah. Just remember that if you're if you're if you're ever in the situation where you need to know 27 and a half is 20. Robbie, I think, was at 23, maybe 24. So. <laughs> What the kids say, the math's not mathing. So yeah, math uh, we're not, not math uh, <laughs> quite. <laughs> this podcast ain't mathing either. <laughs> this isn't math. We just we're not going to do my starting five on our favorite Pythagorean or our favorite algebraic formulas. <laughs> although dibs on yes. completing the square. Derivatives, you say? What? <laughs> all right, all right. See, you know what? The thing with Rowett, he, he, there's so many other things outside of sneakers we talk about. It's hard for me to keep it sneaker related. So. I guess I have to combine two of I know your loves into one thing. Sure. First question. This one's kind of, you know, I'm going in deep already. So you get a chance to make a Nike SB. Okay. Which anime, which comic book character are you choosing to inspire it by? And what are some key features of that okay. shoe? Okay. Uh, I will go with Nightcrawler from the X-Men Inspired mm. uh, because I think, A, he's got the body of a skateboarder. He's got the athleticism of a skateboarder. I think for me, it, the shoe should uh, smell like sulfur. So that way you always know he's there. Much like anytime <laughs> Nightcrawler, if I remember my comic book mythology, whenever he leaves a room, Mike, please keep me honest, there's a smell no, of sulfur. No, you're 100% there. Uh, yeah. uh, on the insoles, I would like there to be some recognition or acknowledgement of the Banff, which was his signature sound whenever he transports. Uh, and I do think there's a lot of other cool imagery because the thing that I really love about SB and the storytelling is they always get these little details. So I'm not really a religious man, but Kurt Wagner is. And I think maybe working that also into the decision and just the fact that he's also an outstanding swashbuckling swordsman, I think you could do so much with it. So I'd say Nightcrawler. Uh, with a low, probably, because that's how he gets down. Perfect. All right. That was good. Yeah. So if if this is your first time listening to the podcast, you'll hear Rowett play naive on a number of things. But you're going to know by the end of this show how much he's playing it up when he's playing naive. Because he just pulled Nightcrawler's entire history out based on Mike saying, what, what SB would you make? I like it. That you know what? I'm I'm satisfied with that answer okay. 100. percent I'll have to ask you anything else. <laughs> All right. S scratch you, you and what? sniff sulfur shoes. <laughs> like, Who's farted in here? What does that smell? <laughs> Yo, bro, it's got those nightcrawler on, and I mean, like that just tells me, like I have smelly shoes, so I feel like that's further the brand. But I will say this: 
Um, I will try to drop nuggets of uh, wisdom. And one thing I will say that if you like our podcast, it's probably because of the chemistry. And one thing I always try to do is try to make these guys laugh or I try to pop them. So if I can make them laugh at least once or twice an episode, that puts me in a comfortable spot. And then I feel like the old Deion Sanders uh, adage goes, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. So thank you for allowing me to do that, gents. <laughs> As always. All yeah, right, Nick, yeah, you're up. Of course. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal one of Robbie's questions because this is straight to the heart. One has to go, oh. Chiefs or Chelsea uh, FC? Chelsea FC. Uh, I don't like the new American owners. <laughs> and I empathize with both of you guys. You're sports fans. And I don't want to get the cart before the horse. But I don't think – very rarely do we get the ability to have a era-defining player in one of our teams. And to have Mahomes there – it's like, I love Chelsea, would love to go to London to catch a game. They've brought me tears of joy. They've brought me tears of sadness. But this next 15 years is what all of us as sports fans dream of, which is that ability to have that transcendent athlete that makes us not only reimagine how the game is being played, but it makes us question our love of the game in the best ways. And I will say this, um, just to be a little bit senti, because that's the other secret sauce of me, is so much of sports watching is a paternal atmosphere and instinct right you always watch games with your dad you whatever you learn usually is from your dad and the one thing i will say about these kansas city chiefs is i've never had a sports team allow me to connect with my mom the way that the chiefs do and i just think that's a brilliant thing and like i said i love chelsea fc but i would almost think like i would be disrespecting my mom by taking the chiefs out of the equation so oh, great go. answer i love it we're trying to get oh, sponsors, right. so you know I got to put the A game hey, on today. We, we, we need. We, I, I need to get the 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 mixing board out and get yeah. the, the round of applause for I that. Know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's see here. So right now, Roy, do you have a particular sneaker that represents a significant life event, like something you wouldn't get rid of that you still have to this day? Yeah, uh, this is cliche. I had three separate teammates of mine uh, from Nike give me a pair of white on white, like Air Force Ones for my baby girl. It's a very stock shoe, but it is also one of those things that it represents a moment of time that was equal parts scary, equal parts uh, life altering in the best way. And it's the old adage of, you know what, this is the most challenging thing I've ever been a part of, but I love it. I wouldn't trade it in for the world. And what makes me so happy is I hope the kid likes it. And the one thing about sneakers is the fact that you can get into sneakers for a lot of different reasons. My kid likes the color. So if I can give her a pair of these shoes and give her markers and let her just go nuts, maybe that unlocks something. So nice. All right. I'm going to go back to the discord. Yo, it's Andrew says top four wrestlers. ever. This is one that I was kind of struggling with, but I'll go with Bret Hart. (laughs) Uh, the excellence of ex- execution, the best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. Uh, Rey Mysterio Jr., just because that man, I know a lot of people think Michael Jordan can fly. Ray Ray can also fly. Uh, <laughs> CM Punk, because as much as he is as a polarizing player, uh, figure or player, I guess if you want to call a wrestler a player, I just tend to resonate with what his beliefs are. And I think it just helps being straight edge like that. And then for my last one, and this is the one I was struggling with, I'll also go with who I feel is kind of a combination of all three, which is Eddie Guerrero, where he's got the Lucha Libre history. He's got Bret Hart's excellence of execution, and he's got CM Punk's just charisma and magnetism. Nice. Look at that. Strong answers. Already coming out yeah. the gate. <sighs> All right, I guess we get another Robbie question. So I know oh, these, these are the day. best. So <laughs> who's on your Mount Rushmore of Nike basketball shoes? Or to say which sneakers sure. are on Mount Rushmore of uh, Nike basketball shoes? Air Jet Flight, I think, uh, Max, just because I know that mm-hmm. we tend to, as an industry and as a community, give credence to the fact that a signature shoe is the one that unlocks a new era, much the way the Kobe 4, which, spoiler mm-hmm. alert, is also on my Mount Rushmore was the kind of door opener for low shoes. But I think the Air Jet Flight Maxes, if you guys have listened to any of these episodes, you know I go for my one yearly insistence to Nike that please retro that shoe. I will almost take, I will almost sacrifice a month's worth of stock options if you just allocate me that in this particular shoe so I can die a happy man. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to go with, 
I'll get one new one. It's controversial, but I really like this LeBron 20. And I think it's the same thing. Maybe I'm just a low head in that sense. And I guess to kind of dip into a couple different things, the dunk low started off as a basketball shoe. Did it not? I mean, that's why it's named the dunk. So yeah. I think just the versatility, because there is something about reimagining and reinventing yourselves. And I think that the dunk does that in a way that no basketball designer in the 80s or 70s thought of and i don't even think half the people that like a dunk could trace the evolution of it so just there's more to it than meets the eye all right optimus Prime, all right. i see you all right <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna kind of throw a random one in here this is off my list of sure. questions so what's the last thing you did for the first time oh <sighs> made love no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, going for some yeah, reason. Just, uh, I'm Steve Carell. I'm, I'm the butters of the group, if you will. Lou, Lou, Lou. I'll say this: uh, traveling abroad for the first time by myself. Uh, I was able to go to Japan, and my goodness, like I know I'm a walking sounding board of cliches, but having that freedom to travel unlock something in me where I'm like, aha, I get it. I know why people do this, and then also the fact that selfishly I was able to do it by myself so I could be a little bit more adventurous and be a little bit more nimble and not have to adhere to a s stricter schedule. So I would say mm -hmm. that traveling to Japan or traveling abroad for the very first time by myself, because the other thing is growing up, anytime we would go abroad, it would be to India. And I had this weird relationship with travel where I'm like, I'm not going on vacation. I am essentially going to my Olympics or I'm going to my presidential election in terms of I have to go to India every three to four years. I have to shake a lot of hands. I have to kiss a lot of babies. I have to remember <laughs> talking points. Like I, growing up, my best friend was from Iran. His name was Sam Hushman. My favorite thing to eat was hamburgers. And I just remember every plane ride to India, my mom taking me aside and saying, okay, what are our talking points? You don't have a Muslim best friend. You don't eat burgers. I was like, oh, go, my son. <laughs> Man, you were definitely running for office early. Uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right. I got one yes. for you. And this one's not – this one's taking a stroll away from sneakers again. Yep. Going back to our comic book love, um, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, Robert Pattinson. Which one's the best Batman? Oh, you're leaving Michael Keaton out? No, oh, come no, on. No, that's, you can't do that one. That's a, that's <laughs> okay. a gimme because everyone's going to okay. say Michael Keaton. That's too easy. So I'm going to take the, like, the First easy. First of all, how dare you for Val Kilmer and Jordan No, Clooney. I did it on purpose. <laughs> everyone was, I will say Michael Adam Keaton. West. Uh, no, I will say this. <laughs> yeah, from, from Batman alone, the Cape Crusader, it's Bale. It's Bale's to lose. From a Bruce Wayne perspective, it is Ben Affleck. Like, one of the crying shames of this whole comic book era is we've scared that man off playing that role seriously. But I will run through a wall for his Bruce Wayne. Because the thing about Bruce Wayne is you don't know if he's that dashing playboy. You don't know if he's that brooding person. So there's a versatility and a range that needs to be conveyed. And I know that Affleck gets made fun of a lot for a lot of obvious and not obvious things. But I thought he murked it as Bruce Wayne. So that's my answer. And then I guess uh, from a total theme and mood perspective, I love the Gotham that Robert Pattinson's Batman is in. So if I could mm -hmm. take one of all, that's what would my answer be. See, look at that. He's learning from the best. Take yeah. how you answer those questions. <laughs> <laughs> I get to 19 and three quarters. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go back to the Discord. Uh, Drew asked... Who are your top five basketball players of all time? Okay, Top five for me. Uh, I'll, I will say this. I started watching religiously and fondly in the early 2000s. So, I mean, Jordan should be on every guy's list. I just want to do this because it's my 20 questions. So I will go in no particular order. Tim Duncan, uh, Steph Curry, LeBron James, uh, Allen Iverson, and... Let's do one for me. I just love watching Manu Ginobili play. And I know he, like Mike's son's middle name is Manu because he's that big of a snip. No, no. I was lied to about that. <laughs> Damn it. You were lied to completely. Uh, if you, like my inside, I started like having Hive just now. All those Spurs are just named. <laughs> <laughs> and like the Manu thing is a sentimental pick. He's not a top five player for a lot of people. I just know that there are certain players that all of us gravitate to that make us love that game more. So, Yep. Nice. Totally. All right. 
So, sticking in sports and shoes, your favorite tennis player and favorite shoes of said player from our man, Robbie. So, that's the thing. I'm not even a big tennis guy. I just was captivated by watching Kyrgios, and I apologize if I butcher mm-hmm. that man's pronunciation. And I just know that Mike is a tennis guy, so I almost feel like I need to repurpose this question to you, Mike, whenever we do 20 questions <laughs> 3.0. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know what? I'll take the easy answer. Uh, Roger Federer and the AJ... RF3, Vapor3, whatever the hell you want to call it. And I think yeah. if I could have a Grail shoe, it would probably be the Black Cement version of that shoe, just because of the fact that Black Cement always works. Like in, in a world of South Beaches and Volts, give me a little bit more Black Cement. And I will say this, I'm uh, <laughs> fortunate enough, I will be attending the US Open this year. So I am just hoping oh, that there is some ooh. sort of acknowledgement from Jordan Brand to go ahead and bless us again with another colorway. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, so, well, that kind of answered one of Yoas Andrew's questions, too, with the all-time grail. If you have another all-time grail, feel free to drop it in. But I'm going to ask you Go a different question since we've got a yeah. ton of them. Um, oh, actually... Let's let's go back to, let's go back to Robbie's yeah. list because Robbie had some great ones. This is pretty solid, uh, yeah. Yeah. What shoe would you gift... Obama. Oh, this, this is a great question. And it, Robbie is one of the few people in the world that I'm actively jealous of in terms of like, son of a bitch. That's a great question. You could have given me a thousand hours and you could have given me a army of a thousand trained orangutans and chimpanz- chimpanzees that know how to work a typewriter. And they couldn't come up with a question as brilliant as what Robbie did. And I may be stalling for time to give the illusion. Of the country, but I will say this. The wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. But when he asked it this morning, I had the answer right away. And it's going to be the monarch because a he to me represents the coolest dad on the block uh he is american royalty hence the monarch portion of it and Mm. the man's got style so i just want to see how bulletproof and maybe that's not the adjective we want to use with presidents but i want to see how bulletproof that man's style is because he has to lace up a pair of those monarchs and as soon as i say that i'm going to be on so many secret service lists and with my complexion and my (laughs) ethnic background or lack thereof it's just your boy's about to hit another joe dimaggio like streak of being selected randomly at airports and other fine transportation (laughs) because i just heard your doorbell ring really (laughs) (laughs) so black suburban in front of your house is weird uh All right, all right, all right. So I think we did that. I think we did that one once already. Let's see. You gotta ask some food Please. questions. Yeah, there's, I see one here. there's a bunch of them. I feel in like there. I'm scared to ask this one because it might be unlocking a secret. No, it's not no, supposed no. to be unlocked. Uh, the thing about meals, <laughs> the best thing you can do is share a meal with somebody. So whether it's physically Facts. or whether it's a recommendation, like to me, that's like one of the highest compliments. That's like buying somebody a book because reading a book right. is a chore. But you are telling this person, hey, I have belief in your capabilities. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. All we right. can chat about it over a nice meal. So it's a full circle thing. Boom. Twofold. So our buddy Gregatron asks, what's the name of the secret Indian pizza joint? So I have no idea about yeah. this. I feel like this is an inside joke somewhere. So, oh, this landed on the this landed on the podcast. I don't remember what episode. Oh, yeah. But, but I will say this, this uh, as a shout out to our Patreon and our Discord, whenever we have that weekend in Beaverton, I will be taking everybody to this establishment. It's called Bombay Pizza Curry. Uh, it's nestled within a mile of Nike campus. So really, I'm just going to take my portion of the trip. We'll go do a tour of Nike campus. We'll go to Bombay Pizza Curry. And then if we're lucky and I can wrangle up enough passes, we'll try to get it in the employee store. So. Let me get my calendar yeah, right listen, for this trip because you've got me with shoes and my pizza and Indian food. I'm here. If I speak it into We'll just use this as the Patreon commercial. Some people make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you come in, Rowan's going to bring you the Nike and the pizza. So that's their selling yeah. point. <laughs> I'm speaking it into the ether. So maybe one day some semblance of it can happen. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. We do need to get a, we do need to get a, a, a proper Portland meetups yes. going with the, with the discord because we did the seattle thing but all the portland ones have been a little small considering how big the seattle thing turned out to be so that's fair all right i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with the food questions mainly because i'm hungry but also just because <laughs> i love to, i'd love to hear your answer um robbie asked your favorite indian dish to eat and one dish you wish more people sure. knew about 
And he also caveated that and said they could be the same thing. I will take a page out of Mr. Gilbert's playbook. I'll give you three. Uh, Butter chicken, right? Butter chicken, chicken tikka masala. It's a basic ass Uh, answer, but I'm a basic ass dude. And you know what? It represents me in the sense that it is a Indian dish that's been Americanized to such a point where snobs are like, you're not Indian enough. And it's like, I don't care. I am (laughs) am tasty. I bring people together. As for things that I think everybody should try. So there is a dish called chaat. It's spelled C-H-A-A-T. Uh, and the mm-hmm. best way I can describe it is it is the equivalent equivalent rather of Indian nachos. But instead of cheese, we utilize mm. yogurt as our base. And then you put cilantro, tamarind sauce, uh, onions, potatoes. So that's another thing where ironically, it's right near the India pizza place. So if somebody's feeling chat, we can go ahead and get that. And then the other thing that my mom makes, and I think this is another question I saw. So I'll seamlessly segue into that. A comfort food for me is something called the paranta, which is... Think of a thick tortilla, but it's filled with potato or cauliflowers or other vegetables inside of it. And it's a staple of the region that I'm from, Punjab. And yeah, just that's comfort food. That reminds me of my mom. That reminds me of my family, which is a very important thing for me. Nice. Awesome. I'm so hungry. I'm starving now. I was like, (laughs) all those items sound fantastic. It was like, well, if I ate Like I said, I'm trying to spell everything out for you guys. So then when you go to your local Indian uh, (laughs) restaurant, you can be put on game. Or rather, you can tell people like, hey, how's the chat looking today? I was going to FaceTime Roy and order from a dude here. (laughs) I've I've literally done this for somebody. So I take (laughs) Let's go for it. Fantastic. All right. Going back to a little comic book action. All right. So if Kevin Feige put you in charge and said, Roy, you're in charge of the next phase, what does that look like for you? Which character would be your centerpiece? So I'm going to go a step in a different direction. I think we are currently going through a very mid era. I had to look up what that word meant because the kids were using it <laughs> all the, the time. Kids use- <laughs> it's hilariously mid. I think we need to zag when everybody's expecting us to zig. So I'm going to go with phase seven, which is going to be a saga that is characterized by laughter. And really, I'm going to try to focus on the funny. So one idea that I have, Disney Plus representatives, if somehow you're listening, you want to make this beautiful show I'm about to come up with you, go for it. So think of Mandalorian, think of a case of the week vibes. But instead of a badass superhero and his faithful ward, because that's what Grogu and Mando are, essentially New Age Batman and Robin, give it to my guys, the Wombats from the Ant-Man movie, because that would be hilarious. And then you've also, if you want to make a big full on franchise, I would say the spectacular supervillains of Spider-Man. And Mike, let me know if I've butchered that as well. But it is literally a group of five or six B-list villains in spider-man's rogue gallery that are trying to go legitimate and try to be a little more helpful to society and it just blows up in their face so i would say that and then i guess if i have to come up with one more thing give me a buddy cop movie with kamala khan and let's go the hulk because i feel like the hulk needs his own oh, story <laughs> that's hilarious i'll watch that yeah. <laughs> yeah. yep i'm intrigued <laughs> Oh, man. That was a pretty good answer. I was not expecting it to go that deep. Me neither. I like it. That was great. Um, All right. Let me just look at Discord real quick. Looks like covered most of these, I believe. I think so. Ooh, Danden asked, top five favorite WWF, WCW moments that you witnessed on TV or in person. Uh, So three of them are WrestleMania centric. One was watching Daniel Bryan win the title. And I think WrestleMania 30 and Danden, please check my notes. Uh, just because that represented the great underdog story. And I think all of us, regardless, what is our vice of choice from a show perspective? If you do a good underdog story, it can be unbeatable, which is kind of ironic given the underdog thing of it all. Uh, the other thing is Kofi Kingston winning the title, ironically, from Daniel Bryan. And that was the first time that a man of color won the most prestigious title. And I think it's one of those things that, especially now that I'm a parent, Mike is a parent, we've kind of chatted about this, this whole notion of representation matters, it truly does. Because I never want Mm. any kid, regardless if they're white, black, brown, purple, yellow, orange, they should never feel like you can't do something because they haven't seen somebody that looks like them attempt or even succeed in that. Like 
the world is your oysters, ladies and germs. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> then the next one, number three, a little bit more personal, was my brother got really good seats at the last WrestleMania. So I was just geeking out because every match I would nice. see him. And uh, he got to see Johnny Knoxville take on Sami Zayn, which not a great technical match, but super hilarious, very jackassy, which as it should be. And then I guess... Just as a final one, my favorite match all time, Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, Halloween Havoc 97, uh, just because that was just a show. That was like a movie. And you're just spellbound by athleticism, by storytelling, by the unspoken communication that happens because it's one thing to wax poetic like we do on this podcast, but to do it with just your physical actions and your limbs there's something truly awesome about that that I wish I could do, but I probably never could. Nice. All right. Good stuff. All right. Well, we'll take it back a few years. Just roll through the time machine. So we go back to an age of the time where everyone's trying, you know, you're trying to figure yourself out, trying to figure out your style. Go back to, to the ripe old age of, let's say, 14. What shoe is 14-year-old Rowett clamoring for? Is there a particular... Whether it be something simple, something extravagant, what shoe was 14-year-old Rowett like, I need to have this in my collection or as the only shoe I owned in the match? So it was really funny. Um, I didn't even really get into shoes until I had gone to the airport in St. Louis. We were I don't know where we were going, but like the adage was, because my mom always wanted us to be good readers, she's like, I'll let you boys buy one book and one magazine. And I was a big Slam Magazine fan at the time. Shout out to Russ, because mm-hmm. I know he's uh, all kind of listening, maybe, hoping. Uh, <laughs> and they had their annual kicks issue. And I was just like, oh, this is Slam. I'm going to get it. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is all about shoes. I guess like, whoa, what is this? The Adidas Kobe <laughs> 2. God damn, that thing is ugly. It is polarizing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I am fortunate to have somebody's beaten pair that I've paid way too much money for. And in fact, so much so that I don't want to tell my wife how much it's actually uh, costing <laughs> us or cost us rather. I may have taken 150 off that. And I'm also being told by this woman that I can only wear that once a year. So it's really my hall pass of a shoe. So I would say that. She's like, I don't want to be anywhere near yeah. you that she won, basically. Yeah, get that toe the, the, um, <laughs> if I can get graphic, that sound you hear is the sound of vaginas drying up. <laughs> That's not going to get us sponsors. We should just cut it. <laughs> I mean, Manscaped. speaking of that, oh, wait, no. and, yeah, being kicked, and being kicked out <laughs> of the Manscaped. house. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. We got two more in the Discord that Perfect. I'm seeing that we... Didn't do so. And I got one more for you. And if Mike needs to drop. I got one more one as well. Okay, cool. Most underrated fast food item of all time. AJ would like to know. Taco Bell quesadilla chicken. Right. Uh, I, Can't be mad at that. I mean, to me, <laughs> yeah. it's just like people go to Taco Bell for a myriad of different reasons. And most of them are taco or bean or burrito related <laughs> beans are also prominently yeah. involved but for me it's just like that's an easy layup of an answer quesadilla all day every day and yeah can't really say much more than that other than for a while i thought i hated mexican food and then the chicken quesadilla descended from the heavens and smacked me in the face with the subtle part of uh jalapeno <laughs> kick and three cheese blend nestled in a nice <laughs> pasty white tortilla Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> and if you've been listening to the podcast long enough, you know, at some point we're going to have a Taco Bell Cantina meetup in yeah. Vegas. Oh, it's okay. uh, on the bucket list in for fact, all of us. Here so. you go. Here's, a, here's a merchandise <laughs> idea for you, Nick. We, we just make a concert T-shirt, but it's just all of our hypothetical sneaker history meetups. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone's location from the Discord yeah. that no one's ever been to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're, you know we're what? Do that. Yeah. I actually like that idea. Let's actually bring yeah. it back. Look at this. The idea man working in his own interview. Here. <laughs> like I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying yeah. to put on a clinic for these sponsors. Be like, hey, we can read, <laughs> we can segue, we can have banter, we can go back and forth, we can go off topic, we can go on topic. It's just what you want from us. We're Renaissance men through and through. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wrap up with with Robbie's last question from the Discord. What colorway would you want a Rowett signature shoe to have? That's a tough one. Uh, I I am really fond of this. In fact, if you can give me a minute while well, you guys, oh, he has one made up. God dang it, he has one built already. So <laughs> there's not 
many things that are memorable about this Chelsea season, and that's probably why I've erased them, uh, erased them rather, from the annals of history. <laughs> but there is this lovely, uh, I can't really see it in this light, but it's a nice champagne color. Sesame, I believe, is the official Nike uh, mm. terminology. So give me that with a nice black. And I think that would be it. Just because of the fact that I've already talked about my love of the black cement, uh, maybe we can work that into the Nightcrawler dunk low that is coming hopefully around the same time that the X-Men movie actually comes out in the MCU, so 2030. Yeah, I was like, at least 2030. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. So that'll be it. All right. Well, I got, I got my last one. So, although your, your mini-me, your daughter is still too young to even understand the theory of our sneaker love. Is there any particular type of shoe she gravitates to now that maybe you, you can see fueling her love for sneakers in the future? So uh, ironic. Um, the other day we have this kind of informal competition in my uh, work crew at uh, Nike. So we were tasked to wear dunks, but dunks that we think are very under the radar, very rare release. So I cheated and I wore my Ninja Turtle dunks that were a gift for us as interns way back when in like 2007. So yeah. she, for whatever reason, loves stomping around in those. So it's like, okay, to make this a full circle moment, I've waxed poetic about the dunk a couple different ways in this episode. I think that may be the shoe that unlocks for her. And even if it doesn't, I just want her to have that freedom to just be able to express herself, whether it be through her writing, whether it be through coloring, whether it be through wearing shoes, whether it be her friends, hopefully not too many scumbags, but you know, you go, you always need one scumbag in your friend group. If for no other reason, just to make yourself feel a little bit better about how you are doing. So <laughs> I'm not doing as bad as yeah. them. <laughs> and for the future history crew, it's me. So there you go. So I would say that let's go with uh, the dunk. Nice. Or nice. if she is the catalyst that gets me that air jet flight max uh, retro, why not that? Let's just speak it in the heavens as well. In the Ninja Turtles yeah, in the Ninja colorway, Turtles hopefully. Colorway. I mean, that's that's a given, Nicholas. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, 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 okay. Last question. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on the last question. People are on the edge of their seats. Right. Don't mess it up. Don't mess so it up. So <laughs> I, got, I got a random, like, weird one that I always ask, yeah. like, interview uh -huh. style. What do you think is the greatest invention of all time? Love. Thanks, thinking, uh, <laughs> no, uh, that's a really good question. God damn it, Engvall. You did fantastic. Um, this is going to sound basic as hell, but the internet, just because it allowed everybody to find their tribe. Like, I think that's the greatest thing about the internet and simultaneously the worst is white supremacy. <laughs> uh, that weird, quirky thing that you're into. Guess what? A whole world of people is also into them, and they just needed a Reddit thread or a Twitter thread or a whatever. And now you have friends. And ultimately, I'll, not to sound too cheesy, but it's like it's the thing that allowed me to be friends with a guy from Sacramento, a gentleman from Houston, and another guy from Vegas who now resides in the same hometown as me as Portland. So, like, without the internet, I don't think half of us know what we're doing in this crazy mixed up world. So true. Yeah. So true. I would say drop the mic, but before you do that, you got to let everybody know how they can find you outside. Uh, you of the can podcast. find me at roadm13 on Instagram, Rohizi on Twitter. I am a part of Nick Engvall's cinematic universe here on Sneaker History, <laughs> on Exhaust Notes, on whatever Patreon show Mike wants to do on whatever show Robbie wants to do. Sometimes I like to watch Robbie's Closet because that's another offering of our cinematic universe that doesn't get its proper shine. So yeah, well, you can find me wherever. In fact, you know what? I don't want followers. Just <laughs> I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> you you want to follow me? Follow me at R-A-H-B-E-E-702 at all. And that's my other trademark. So thank you guys so he's, much. He's this like was fun. Agent Coulson. Hopefully people are captivated for the 32 minutes. And yeah, if there are any other questions, hit me up on the Discord because I love the Discord and I want to make sure that we continue to shine a spotlight on them. Yeah, let's get those concerts. Yeah, this was a blast. This was a blast. I love hearing your answers too. And it's, you know, it's been awesome to get to know all you guys doing this. And like you said, you know, hell, the, the, even if it's the pandemic, right? Like the pandemic forced us into doing this even more frequently than we probably ever thought we would. <laughs> so, um, the internet, not to say that, the, 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 you know, the pandemic is uh, up there with the internet, but it definitely helped shape our relationships and our friendships. So I would have never thought that I'd be like, you know, 
going to watch a Mariners game with Rowett or, you know, <laughs> man, uh, being jealous of Mike going to the going to Hollywood premieres and <laughs> oh, carpeting and stuff. Listen, you know? I'm waiting for air to the Mike Guillory story. Uh, and I just ask <laughs> that they get somebody <laughs> remotely competent as an actor as me. Cause just, that's all I, I want. Uh, all right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Make sure you give Rowett a follow and uh, join us in the discord. We've got a great community. Obviously thanks to everybody for shooting the questions to us so we could have this conversation. And we appreciate all your support. We'll catch you in the next episode. Peace. See you.